All right, this is our first recorded attempt of the dual stage with the second stage actually functioning well. So, Justin, fire when you're ready. Engaging. Switching. Engaged. Firing mode. <laughs> ready? <laughs> One. Go. Well, that. Here we go. Firing in three, two. One. All right. Three, two, one. All right. So this is our second shot. Uh, we're going to be using this projectile now. This is in our initial test, the ones that we uh, figured out worked the best. It's the exact size of our, our coil. Um, and so we're going to try right. it. Three, two, one. Two, one. Uh, so what we did, uh, so I'm going to explain the outside of the gun, uh, is what we have inside in this, this box here, and also one on this side of the box, is a bunch of capacitors. Uh, now these capacitors are uh, wired in parallel, um, and this just increases the capacitance, so we can have a nice capacitant bank. Uh, these are from a disposable camera, uh, so they're about 330 volts. Uh, what else we got here is um, we got a charging circuit. That's just on top of here, and that looks something like this. Um, this charging circuit is also from a disposable camera. Uh, so it uses a 1.5 battery, some use AA, some use AAA uh, battery to charge our capacitors. Uh, again, uh, a better charging circuit could probably be made, however, this was cheap, as in free, and uh, was just easy to implement in our design as our focus wasn't on the charging circuit. Uh, so here, like I said, we got our, our uh, case that contains our capacitors. We have a charging circuit. So what I'd do is I'd, I'd put my battery in here, and I would flip the switch, and that's going to start charging. Um, and then I got this button here to discharge it. Uh, there's another, this other bank is actually going to be on a, a switch uh, via some stuff that Nathan is going to explain to us a little bit later on how that works. Um, and what we're going to be shooting is we're going to be shooting a different size of projectiles. Um, so these are just made out of steel. Um, they, uh, of course, the more iron in them, the better. Uh, we try to find, uh, you know, as much iron as we could. Uh, it's stuck. That's not actually magnetic. Uh, and so we, we just tried different different lengths and different fatness of coils of excuse me of projectiles. Um, in our initial testing, uh, we found that that this particular one worked the best. Uh, this was the actual size of our coil. Um, but when we did at a 45 degree angle, um, this guy actually worked the best. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. I think it has something just with the amount of mass. Um, on it, but this actually went about 84 feet, um, which is pretty impressive for just this little coil gun. If you went smaller, it didn't have enough mass to actually shoot. If you went bigger, it would actually, uh, your second coil that we have with our two stage coil would actually cause it to uh, slow it down. And so this projectile was the best. All right, uh, my name's Nathan. I'm uh, the other uh, project member here. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about the inside of our coil gun here. Uh, we have an optical setup here. So we have what's uh, called a phototransistor right here that uh, basically generates a voltage uh, when it receives infrared light. Um, and there's on the other side here we have our infrared uh, diode. Now when a projectile crosses those guys, this diode will stop, or our phototransistor, the white one on the side, will stop producing voltage. Uh, what What that means is that it'll uh, when it stops producing voltage, it'll go into the op amp over here, which is amplifying the signal from that diode, will also stop producing voltage, which will go up to our NOT gate on this side, and then trigger the gate on our SCR. Um, but, so we basically we use this to discharge electronically all of, our, all of our power stored in our capacitors through this coil. So to give you just kind of a quick visual, uh, if you still don't get it, Basically, uh, we have our projectile here, 
It's going to be launched by the first coil. It's going to cross that light beam, and that crossing that light beam is going to trigger, is going to cause it to go through, uh, the, it's going to stop producing voltage, the op amp will stop amplifying anything, the NOT gate will be triggered, and it will hit the gate of the SCR. The SCR opens up, allowing all the current of the capacitor to go through the inductor straight to ground. Goes through, accelerates even further in the magnetic field, and finally leaves the barrel. Now that we've had the fun of shooting our projectile through cans and be able to shoot our, our cola gun outside, we need to do some math. Um, our fundamental question that we want answered is, what is the velocity of our projectile as it leaves the muzzle of our coil gun? Um, so what we're going to be using is we're going to be using this simple equation, distance equals velocity multiplied by time. Um, and so what we did is we set up this simple uh, parabolic uh, projectile motion path. We used our two knowns. We knew that our projectile went 85 feet. That was the furthest one that we shot. And we also um, knew that we shot it at 45 degrees. Um, using this basic concept, we were able to get a few initial values that we could use to be able to hopefully solve for velocity. Now the only real hard part of this whole equation is solving for time. In order to do that, we use the fact that your y direction velocity hits zero halfway through there. So looking at this right here, you can see that we came up with this equation right here for our total time over the total arc period. Once we had that, we just plugged it into our uh, distance equals velocity times time, and we pushed it through here. This is the x component of the, of the velocity, and this is the time. Com this is just time plugged in directly from there. We can then go through and solve. And when we did all the math out, we got it to be about 52 feet per second uh, as our muzzle velocity. So in the real world, that's uh, let's compare it to a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson. A 40 caliber Smith & Wesson fires about 980 feet per second. So if we were to, uh, assuming linear, um, a direct linear relationship between the number of stages and the velocity of the, out of the barrel, that would mean that we need about 37 stages, give or take, in order to accomplish the same velocity as a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson.